Recently, we realized that our fuel line has been crushed more than halfway down. So today, we're gonna take out the old fuel line and bend a brand new one. Hi guys, and welcome back to Ellie's Garage, where my dad and I are restoring a 1965 Ford Falcon to become my daily driver. I'm at college in the UK, but we're still learning as we go. Oh my gosh! I wonder if that happened on the highway somewhere or what something. Did we hit? <laughs> I don't know. Clearly, the fuel line has some issues. So we started by getting the line disconnected. There we go. Nice. So to clamp off the rubber fuel line in the back, we're gonna use these needle nose vice grip things, but we don't want the metal to like eat into the actual rubber line. So we're gonna put this uh, old line that we have on each of the ends, like push it down all the way, and then cut it so that. It'll be a little softer than it is now. Oh, so you're gonna stick it on and then cut it? Yeah. Nice, I like Cause it. Because otherwise I don't know where the, the little end is. Beep, 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 beep. Same thing on the other side. I did it. Not that setting. Okay, air can't get through. That sounds pretty good then. That's a good test. Okay, so we are under the back of the car and this is where our fuel line and filter and everything is. So we're just gonna clamp the rubber fuel line um, and then disconnect the metal fuel line from the rubber fuel line and then work on starting the process of getting it out. Nice. You want me to kind of pull from over yeah, here? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Ah! Are you okay? Uh, so we accidentally rotated the center housing, which not super surprising that we did that because it turns pretty easily. Um, but now we have to watch out for that. But I think if I just kind of take this and kind of give it a turn like that. No, it's still uh, look, so look well. And look, and it's, look, did it roll it just a little? Oh. Well, we eventually got that leak stopped and then moved on. Okay, so we have it completely detached. So now we are going to push it yeah, uh, see if we can forward. Get a, not over yeah. the, just yeah, keep an eye up front. Oh. Yeah. But. Yeah, pull. Oh, you did it. Good job. Okay, so now that it's clean, you can actually see the three spots where, um, the line got smushed and it's actually kind of horrifying to look at. Glad we're glad we're fixing it. All right, let me. <laughs> so there are a lot of different kinds of metal lines. Our old one was aluminum, which this is also aluminum from an old bending project. Aluminum is easy to work with, but obviously pretty soft, leading to the problems <laughs> that we've been having with our fuel line currently. So what we've been told to use is stainless steel, which yes, is harder, so isn't going to have the same problems that aluminum does, but is going to be very difficult to work with. Yeah, can you, can you bend it? <laughs> <laughs> there we go, I did it slightly. <laughs> because this is going to be a lot harder to work with, our friends at Eastwood sent us a lot of their bending and straightening tools. So we're going to start by using Eastwood's 3-8 straightener to see if we can straighten this entire line. So Dad and I got our first introduction to just how hard it is to work with 3-8 stainless steel. <laughs> Ouch. Watch out, Dad. <laughs> but eventually we got it pretty much straight. Okay, so there's a big difference between the bent fuel line and the one we have straightened um so we're gonna work on going through bend by bend but because the stainless steel is so much harder to bend we have to use the vise thus this whole workbench is out in uh the middle of the driveway with us so we're gonna be using this bender putting it in the vise and then making all of our bends with it so we're going to do a quick test to see how exactly this bends and how to line it up perfectly. So, is this? Why don't you? Why don't you line that line up with that zero? You mark? actually hit it really well. <laughs> Give that a bend. Okay. So, so, but the bend happened here. The bend happened half an inch away. There. Wait, I get, you know, it, it, I guess it depends on the angle of the bend you're gonna do. So if I want to bend here, but I want to bend at a forty-five. 
So you're gonna put it in, you're in between the zero and the 45 about, right? I wanna try this. Okay. It yeah. lines up with the 45. Okay, so you just did a 45? Yeah, and that's in the middle. Okay, let's start. Yeah, stringing the line is hard, but bending 3 8 stainless is not easy. So, Dad and I just went through the process. Checking the plane of the bend, marking it, and trying to be as accurate as we could to the size of each bend. Hey, this is pretty good. a slight problem which is that both ends of the fuel line are too long to bend and we need to do a 90 degree bend and we're at 45 degrees and can't go any further because of the length of the line so what we are going to do is we're going to measure out how much line is left on uh, the original line so we have we're working on this bend right now so we have about that much length left but because it's all curved, you can't just like measure from point A to point B because that's going to be too short. So we have a piece of string and I'm just going to hold it at this bend. Make sure I'm getting through all the curves and everything. Taking it up here. Okay. That is how much line we need left. We have a lot more than that. So I'm going to cut this and just a little bit more. Ooh, I like your cutter. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Oh, sorry. This is actually going to be the other thing because. Oh, yeah, this. There we go. Oh, so the line was bent and it looked pretty close to the previous one. But now that it's bent, it's time for the real test to try and get it back under the car. And it didn't take so long before we realized we had a few issues. Okay, so maybe we should but start this the, is, this oh, is gonna. But it not only needs to go this way, we need to bring it away from the drive shaft. Oh. It needs to rotate and go like that. Closer. All right, it's clear now. The bigger issue here is that with a softer metal, even a 3 8 line, we could probably bend it while it was installed. But with stainless, any little corrections or bends we needed to make, that we had to take it out, bend it, and try it again. Needless to say, it wasn't easy. Final thing we have to do before we can get it back in the car is flare the ends of this stainless line. Uh, but off camera, we tried to uh, flare a test strip with our Eastwood flaring tool that we've used in the past. Um, and yes, it is 3 8 Yes, it is stainless, making it hard. But it's also freezing today. I'm dying. I have no more fingers because of hypothermia. <laughs> it's making it extra hard and we can't flare it with just like force. So what we're going to try now is heating the end of the lineup, putting it in, obviously being careful, but. Yeah, let's heat it up. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dad, wait, hold your hand up. Oh, it feels good. I know. That was further we got. There it goes. Hooray! Hooray. <laughs> okay, so now it's just time to cut and flare both ends. Right. 
Nice. Oh, nice. I think I would definitely prefer that. That's a good cutting tool. Can I try it? I want to see what it feels it. like. Nice. That's really cool. Hooray! Hooray! There. This is kind of a cool view. It's a pretty cool shot. Thanks for holding it, guys. Taking off the tape that we used to mark where we needed bends. Uh, this is all ready to go in, but we are freezing. <laughs> so we're gonna go we in go warm up. and warm up, and then we'll put it in, and then hopefully be done. After we warmed up a bit, we finally got it installed. It's all good up here. I think we're set. Good job. <laughs> all right, so it's in. Uh -huh. It's not perfect. No, no chance. But uh, it was really hard to bend. Yeah. You can't make any adjustments once it in. Once it's in, and that's what we relied on last time. Yeah. I mean, I think I think if you're doing stainless. Like you, you need, make you need it to have, well, or you need to have a lift and you need to have like the brake lines out uh -huh. and like, you, like you need to be able to put it up, compare up, it, bring and it pull out, it down. bend it. I mean, you just can't do that when doing here. It's just, ugh. It's... we'll see how this one goes with the test of time. Oh, uh, if we goodness. have issues with it on like final fitment and plugging everything back up, uh, we'll redo it. We, we have to redo it maybe in aluminum. We'll see. Oh my it was gosh. worth trying. It was worth trying. Yeah. Not every episode has a happy ending. <laughs> we got it in. We got it in. We did a little project over winter break. Even though we heard that 3-8 stainless would be difficult, we had no idea what we were in for. Still, it's done and installed, but we may be revisiting it in the future. Either way, big thanks to our friends at Eastwood. Even if we didn't do the best job with the bending, the tools that they sent us, like their 3-8 straightener, the cutting and deburring tools, and definitely the bending and flaring tools, all worked great. And if you want to get your own, you can use the links in the description. So what I'm taking out of the garage is that even if something is hard, having the right tools can make a big difference. Thanks to all of my patrons, and if you want to support what we're doing on this channel, you can check us out on Patreon. Patreon subscribers, $5 and up, get an invitation to attend our monthly live streams, where even when I'm at college, Dad and I get on a chat, talk about what's going on, some of the things Dad is doing to keep Carl moving forward, what we're planning, and even some stuff about my life here in the UK and studying engineering. So check us out at patreon.com slash Ellie's Garage. As always, thank you to my executive producer, Drew Carter, and I'll see you next time in the garage. <laughs>